In this video, we're going to focus on naming cycloalkanes. So let's begin with this one. Here we have a three carbon cycloalkane. You can see the three carbons at the edges. And we know that three carbons is associated with the name propane for an alkane. So this is called cyclopropane. Anytime you have a ring of carbon atoms, you need to add the prefix cyclo. So with that in mind, what is the name of this particular cycloalkane? So here we have four carbons. And four carbons is associated with butane. So this is called cyclobutane. Now there's two other common shapes that you need to be familiar with. This is called cyclopentane, since it's a ring with five carbons. And the one that looks like a hexagon, this is known as cyclohexane. Now go ahead and take a minute and draw cycloheptane and cyclooctane. So this is how you draw cycloheptane. You can start by putting two lines. That's cycloheptane. And for cyclooctane, this is probably the most easiest way to draw it. It has eight sides. And that's how you draw cyclooctane. Now let's say if we have a six carbon ring with two carbons outside of it. What is the name of this particular cycloalkane? How can we name it? So as a substituent, this group is known as an ethyl group since it contains two carbons. Keep in mind, for one carbon, it's associated with the word methane. As a substituent, it's known as methyl. Ethane is two carbons, propane three, butane 4, pentane 5, hexane 6, heptane is for 7, octane is associated with 8, nonane 9, decane 10. So make sure you know the first 10 names of the common alkanes. The name for this compound is called ethyl cyclohexane. You just got to put these two together. And since you only have one substituent, you don't have to say one ethyl cyclohexane because it's automatically on carbon 1. You need at least two substituents to begin putting numbers on it. What about this one? How can we name this particular alkane? So this is a methyl group, since it only has one carbon. And here we have an ethyl group. Now when you have multiple groups, you want to put it in alphabetical order. E comes before M, so we want to put ethyl first before methyl. And if possible, you want to number it in order, in increasing order. So we're going to assign ethyl carbon 1, and carbon 2 is going to be associated with methyl. We have five carbons in the ring, so we know it's a cyclopentane ring. So this is going to be called 1-ethyl-2-methyl cyclopentane. You will always need a dash to separate a number and a letter. And if you have two numbers, you can separate them by a comma. Try this one. Go ahead and name this particular compound. By the way, for each of these examples, feel free to pause the video as you work on it. So there's four carbon atoms in the ring, so the parent name is called cyclobutane, and we have a methyl on carbon 1 and on carbon 3. So this is going to be called 1, 3, use a comma to separate the numbers, dash dimethyl, since we have two methyl substituents, cyclobutane. So that's the name for this particular uh, compound. Let's move on to our next example.
go ahead and name this compound. So we need to identify the longest chain. The longest chain is not the ring. It is the straight chain that we see here. The ring has six carbons, but the chain above has seven. So that's going to be the parent name, which is associated with the word heptane. So what do we call this as a substituent? We know the parent name for a six carbon ring is cyclohexane. But as a substituent, it's called cyclohexyl with a YL. So the name for this compound is 3 cyclohexyl heptane. What is the name of that compound? How can we name it? So we have a wedge and a dash. Because one side is, one chlorine atom is in the front and the other is in the back, this is the trans isomer. And we have a chlorine atom on carbon one and two. And there's six carbon atoms in total in the ring. So we have a cyclohexane ring. So this is going to be called trans. 1, 2, dichloro, cyclohexane. So if that's the case, how can we name this particular compound? Since both bromine atoms are on the wedge, we have the cis isomer. And we have a total of five carbons in a ring. So this is going to be called cis, one, two, dibromo, cyclopentane. Now what about this one? Go ahead and name this particular cycloalkane. So we have a bromine group, a bromo group on carbon one, and an ethyl group on carbon three. Now, because B comes before E, we want to put the one with the B. We want to say one bromo, three ethyl, as opposed to one ethyl, three bromo. We need to alphabetize it, and if possible, put it in increase in order. So to name it, it's going to be one bromo dash 3-ethyl cyclohexane. So not only were we able to put it in alphabetical order, but we are able to put the numbers in increasing order, which is preferable. Now let's move on to bicyclic compounds. So let's say if we have a bicyclic compound that is a compound with two rings, if it looks like that, how can we name it? Now the first thing you need to be able to do is identify the bridgehead carbons, which are here. Now how many carbons are between the bridgehead carbons on the left side? Notice that we only have two. On the right side, there's only two carbons here. And on top, between the two bridge head carbons, there's only one. So to name it, it's going to be called a bicyclo in descendant order 2, 2, 1. And then add the total number of carbons that we have, which is going to be the sum of these three numbers plus the two bridge head carbons, which is 7. So by cyclo 221 heptane. Let's try another example.
go ahead and name this one. So on the left side, there are two carbons. On the right side, we have three. And on top, we have one. So to name it, it's going to be bicyclo. Three, two, one in descending order. Three plus two plus one is six. And if you add the two bridgehead carbons, that's eight. And eight is associated with octane since we have a total of eight carbons. So it's bicyclo three, two, one octane. As you can see, it's not very difficult to name bicyclic compounds. But let's try one final example. Go ahead and name this one. Notice that on the left side, we have two carbons. We have two on the right. And in the top portion, between the two bridgehead carbons, we have two as well. So this is going to be called bicyclo. Two, 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 octane.